So let's take a look at four of the strongest Tyranids army lists around right now, and some of the units and combos that make them work well. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd take a look at a quick evolution of Tyranid Tactics. I did make a full faction overview of Tyranids in 9th edition just the other week, and while we did talk about one Leviathan list there, one request that I got was to talk through a few other Tyranid lists, particularly for other Hive fleets, so that's what I thought we'd do today. We'll go over four strong Tyranid lists right now that have all done very well at tournaments, take a look at what sort of selections people are playing, and the ways that people make different Hive fleets work. First up, we've got a Hive Fleet Kraken list, this one by John Lennon of Art of War. He used this to take first at Crucible 10 GT, and besides Hive Fleet Leviathan, Kraken, Behemoth, and Jormungander all seem to be the ones that are strongest besides them. Kraken are the super speedy Tyranids. When they hit combat, their melee attacks get an extra AP minus 1, and they get to advance D3 plus 3 inches, with an extra nasty stratagem to make them advance a full 8 inches, which is really quite brutal when combined with Onslaught for advance and charge. The list is made up of two patrol detachments and a fortification. The two patrol detachments allow you to use two different hive tyrants. There's one safer foot one here with the heavy venom cranon and bone sword. That takes catalyst for a 5 plus feel no pain, paroxysm to debuff enemies, and direct guidance for plus one to hit for a core unit. There's then the very common winged hive tyrant with adrenal glands. The Reaper of Obliterax for just monstrous melee that causes mortal wounds every time it hits. Plus you can use the adrenal gland stratagem for an extra D3 attacks to make it hit very hard potentially charge something that's 17 inches away, and then maybe plus an advance with Onslaught, and then after you've hit something to death, potentially just scoot right back into safety by using the overrun stratagem. Very nasty, and is crazily fast in this list, really a threat that can't be ignored. There's then a Neurothrope, who also takes Catalyst and Onslaught. Onslaught just seems to be a massively important spell with Kraken. You can have the unit zipping around and charging from deployment zone to deployment zone. Finally, and not laying up on the speeds, there's the Parasite and Mortrex with Alien Cunning, a 16 inch movement and counting as 5 obsec models. This guy can sweep in, mess up some light infantry, and take some objectives. Then we get onto squads. In the troop slots, there's 10 gargoyles that could jump off the board and back on again to do actions if needed, or just zip up to midfield objectives with obsec. 3 Tyranid Warriors with a little bit of synapse. They take Death Spitters, Bone Swords, and a single Venom Cannon, and they'd also allow you to use that Imperative for the extra damage in combat, seeming very relevant for this army. There's 3 Venom Thropes, giving units a minus 1 to hit as they move up. They also have the Feeder Tendrils, which could be kind of handy if they do need to score that secondary objective to kill squad leaders. There's 2 units of Fast and Brutal Tyranid Raveners. They take Death Spitters, with one squad having Rending Claws, and one squad having Scything Talons. They'll be extra nasty at mauling infantry, the Rending Claw one will be good against going through high saves, and the Scything Talon ones will butcher hordes. There's then two units of Zone Thropes, which allow for the Invul Synaptic Imperative, plus a bucket of Mortal Wounds. Never a bad thing to hoover up a whole load of enemies that try and make it to your lines. There's three Tyrant Guard that are slot free with a Hive Tyrant, they could be good for hiding both the Hive Tyrants, and maybe having the winged one zip back to them if needed. Three Biovores for a little bit of Ignore's Line of Sight Mortal Wounds, or potentially putting down Annoying Spore Mines to move block if possible. Interestingly, a unit of three Pyrovores, they'd provide some solid anti-infantry shooting, and have quite a big threat range with Kraken advances. Finally, there's a Spore Assist in the midfield, that can spit out a few Spore Mines, and potentially provide some Synapse to units moving up into the midboard, if they do happen to get out of range. Overall, incredibly fast and very brutal. You could hide a lot of these units behind terrain and have them jump out to absolutely mess up enemies, and lots of small units to do objectives and actions. Obviously taking first at a grand tournament by a great player, I've got no doubt it was played to an absolute top notch as well. Moving on though, and here's one example of a Leviathan list, this one by Mark Morrow taking first at Broadsword Wargaming Major, and I'll try and mainly highlight the differences and unique bits of the lists going forward. This list is Leviathan, the most popular Tyranid Hive fleet competitively at the moment. Their innate trait is for Synapse units to have transhuman physiology, wound rolls of 1 to 3 always fail against them, going down to 1s to 2s for little swarms and things. This one also takes Unstoppable Swarm as the adaptive bit, so it's resistant to move modifiers, quite good for moving through terrain. The HQ section is set up kind of similarly, there's a Neurothrope Winged Hive Tyrant with the Reaper, and that takes direct guidance, and the Parasite of Mortrex with Alien Cunning in the fast attack. The Neurothrope is able to use Synaptic Tendrils to use its ability twice for a 3d6 drop the lowest cast, 
that will most likely be applied to that Maliceptor for more chance to spit out a bunch of mortal wounds. Leviathan also gets Hive Nexus as well, potentially giving you another synaptic imperative on one core unit. You could use it to get involves on the big blocks of warriors perhaps. Speaking of which, in the squads the troop section is dominated by two big blocks of nine warriors. Again they take basically the same loadout, death spitters, bone swords and venom cannons, and they also spring for flesh hooks and adrenal glands, the adrenal glands moving them forward faster and are quite efficient in terms of points cost for the squad when you apply it to all 9. Again there's 10 gargoyles for fast obsec, 3 venom thropes for the minus 1 to hit, 2 biovores this time, 3 tyrant guards, 3 zone thropes for allowing the imperative and mortal wounds, and then this time there's a couple of monsters, a winged harpy with the heavy venom cannon and voracious ammunition, a really efficient flyer with massively powerful shooting, a fair few anti-infantry shots, powerful bombs and really good anti-tank fire. Voracious Ammunition is the one that gives you D3 mortal wounds on the roll of a 2 plus when it hits something and is a pretty good pickup for 15 points, basically earning its points back if it fires twice. Finally, despite the increased points cost, there's a big bad Maliceptor as well. This one takes Paroxysm and Psychic Scream and if it casts on over a 7, it will be belting out the mortal wounds and that'll be quite likely with the Neurothrope. Certainly a lot more pricey for the mortal wound premium now, but laying down somewhere around 6 to 10 mortal wounds on average per psychic phase is pretty nuts, as well as having a little bit of close combat melee as well. Overall, one very nice example of what Leviathan can do. Next up, we've got a different take on a Leviathan list. This one's got two tyrants and some other monsters as well. In general, tyrannies do tend to be quite about the medium bogs these days, so it's quite nice to see a whole bunch of monsters on the table. Here we've got Leviathan again for the transhuman, and I believe as there wasn't an adaptive trait listed, this means it would get the single hit reroll per unit, so a small but nice damage increase to basically every unit on the board, particularly good for high strength things like hive tyrant melee attacks, or perhaps exocrines when shooting. This time we've got a battalion and a patrol detachment to unlock multiple tyrants. There's everyone's favourite winged hive tyrant with the reaper, and this time the foot tyrant takes the shard gullet heavy venom cannon, that's the massive great threatening one with a crazy AP 5 and damage 5. And as well as the single Leviathan reroll, this one also has perfectly adapted, allowing a further reroll as well. There's a pretty reasonable chance of those very scary shots landing home. In the troops, we've got slightly more swarms here. Two big units of 10 gargoyles to move forward with the obsec. 10 termagants, presumably just to hold home field objectives and things. And then one unit of three warriors with death spitters and dual bone swords. Again, there's two biovores here for a little bit of mortal wound shooting and planting spore mines, three tyrant guard to defend the tyrants, the three zone thropes again to allow the imperative, and then a rather large chunk of the points of the list are tied up in four big monsters, two harpies each with the stranglethorn cannons, they're the damage two but more shot variant, and they cost a bit less points than the heavy venom cannons, they both get durability upgrades, one takes Dermic Symbiosis, which will get you the 4 plus invul save on the unit, and the other one takes Synaptic Enhancement, makes it a synapse creature, and in Leviathan that will mean that it gets that transhuman physiology rule all the time. Quite handy as well for handing out Synaptic Imperatives too. Finally, there's two Exocrines to round off the list, basically the Tyranids version of a heavy firepower battle tank. They both spit out a whole clutch of Strength 8, AP 3 and Damage 3 shooting attacks, are fairly tough to take out between their 15 wounds and 2 plus save, and even get to ignore cover with those powerful guns if they move slowly. One of them also takes that voracious ammunition upgrade, the 15.1 for the chance at mortal wounds. Certainly cool to see a different take on Leviathan, rather than the durable transhuman physiology tyranid warrior battle line, this one's far more about damage dealing monsters. Finally, and for a different High Fleet take, we've got High Fleet Jormungander. This one was run by Joshua Minnick, who used it to take first at Gemhammer GT. You don't really have to look too hard to see Tyranid lists topping tournaments these days, but this one's perhaps the most genuinely different of the list, really going all in on spamming out Tyranid Psychic. The High Fleet bonus that they get is basically dense cover at greater than 18 inches away, so minus one to hit at range, and it goes down to just 12 inches away for anything that's not a monster. Jormungander also has the 1 CP stratagem buried in weight, so a unit can just jump up out of nowhere, basically getting deep strike, and a psychic power called Lurking Moors that everyone gets for free, giving you an extra AP minus 1 against one marked enemy unit. It could be kind of relevant if it's opportunistic to cast that on a unit that's just about to be charged. For such a heavily psychic army, perhaps one of the major advantages though is combining that with Synaptic Ganglia. This one allows you to re-roll Deny the Witch tests, and with so many psychers around, that's just going to be brutal against anything like Grey Knights or Thousand Suns. 
The Zonethropes and Neurothropes will likely be denying their powers all game long. In addition to that, you also get an extra plus 3 inches to the range of every cast, so it's not going to be particularly hard to get things like Smite in range or any other close range powers. I think it's probably worth starting with the Psychers, seeing as there's just so many of them. In the HQ section, there's two Neurothropes, each with Catalyst and Paroxysm. One of them takes Onslaught with the Resonance Barb, the Resonance Barb also giving you a plus 1 to cast, and that one also has Synaptic Tendrils as well, again allowing you to have another unit with 3d6 to cast. Then there's a massive three units of four zone throbes, each of which will be casting a smite with a pretty reasonable chance to get a super smite, and then adding three mortal wounds to the total, which will still be the case even if they take a casualty. It really is quite intimidating on mass if the opponent puts a key unit out front, and they're just going to have that absolutely obliterated with mortal wounds between these guys and the neurothrobes, though it is paying a fair amount of points for the privilege at 50 points per zone throbe. Otherwise, we've got another copy of that Foot Tyrant with Shard Gullet. He's got Psychic Scream and the Horror and the Heightened Senses Warlord trait. Heightened Senses gives you fight first, but also every time you make an attack, you get to re-roll the hit roll as well. Not too bad when combined with that very powerful gun. Beyond that, we've also got the Parasite of Mortrex, who takes Alien Cunning. Again, can do objective snatchy things, and he also has the Gestation Sack Relic as well. That one would allow him to spawn some Rippers somewhere and perhaps put down another annoying unit on a far-flung objective that the opponent doesn't want to try and deal with. Then for the rest of the list, we've got a good number of bodies in the troop slot, one unit of 10 Hormagons and two units of 10 Gargoyles, not a whole load of damage against anything besides light infantry, but should provide a good number of bodies for the objectives and screening for the Psychers. There's then a unit of 5 Raveners with Rending Claws and Death Spitters, a good bit of fast melee for a bit of a counterpunch there. Three Biovores to spit out some mortal wounds at range, and maybe sit on a home field objective. Our staple of the Tyrant Guard to protect the Hive Tyrant. A Spore Assist for some forward deployment and Spore Mind shenanigans. And then interestingly, a couple of Lictors. Really quite a cool pick to see. Fairly rare in tournament winning Tyranid lists. Basically can jump out of nowhere and hopefully mulch a unit on an objective. Though I feel like you would have to play with them quite carefully to get your value out of them at 70 points each. Overall a very cool list, and it's quite nice to see a different army archetype being embraced. I'm sure those zone throbes and the long range mortal wounds will be pretty intimidating to face on the table. So there we have it then, a quick overview of four different strong tyranid army lists for Warhammer 40k at the moment. Let me know your thoughts on the armies, and particularly if there's anything that I've missed or misunderstood. Obviously I'm not the person who's designed or played these lists, so I'm sure I'll be missing all sorts of things. If you'd like to see some more details for the Tyranids, then feel free to check out the full faction review of them I did a week or so back. I'll link that down in the video description. Otherwise, subscribe to Allspets Tactics for more like this. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to quickly mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description below. Channel patrons get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.